In this video, I'm going to talk about theorems related to chords, arcs, central angles, and inscribed angles. So let's take, for example, we have a circle. So it's a circle A. And let's put an arc. And let's have another arc that is around having the same length as the other arc. So we are not sure if they are really equal or the same length, meaning they are congruent, unless we have a basis. So how do we know that two arcs are congruent, meaning having the same length? So one way to know that is using its uh, central angle. That intercepts the arc. So for example, the central angle of the first arc is 30 degrees. And let's have another central angle, which is having also the same measure. So if um, the central angles of the two arcs are congruent, that means the two arcs are having the same length or they are congruent. The same idea as um, if the two arcs are in different circles. For example, we have this circle B. So now, the two arcs are in uh, another in, in different circles, and we assume that these two circles are congruent circles. So it must be congruent circles, meaning the same measure of radius. So this idea is still true uh, with the two arcs. They are congruent if we have a congruent central angle. So if the central angle of the two arcs, even in, in they are in two congruent circles, they are still congruent. Now our basis for this is this theorem. In a circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding central angles are congruent. So again, it's applicable for two different circles when the, these circles are congruent circles, meaning the same measure of radius. So let's have another circle. So it's still circle A, and we're going to put two arcs. And another way to know that these two arcs are having the same length or congruent is uh, using their chords. So if the chords are having the same length or congruent, that means uh, their corresponding arcs are also congruent. Provided that the endpoints of the, these chords are connected to the endpoints as well of the arc. The same way with uh, arcs which are in different circles but congruent circles. So now the arcs are in separate circles, circle A and circle B, but these are assumed to be congruent circles. So the same idea applies. If the chords of these um, arcs are congruent, that means the arcs are also congruent or the same measure. So our basis is this theorem. In a circle, or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So again, it's using the if, if and only if. That means it's true with the vice versa. Meaning, you will know that two chords are congruent if their arcs are congruent. So let's have another circle. So circle A and then let's have a chord. And then let's add a radius that intersect this chord. So as you can see in the figure, it looks like the chord is exactly divided into two, meaning it's bisected by the radius. But we are not sure how will be how are we going to be sure that the radius bisects, meaning it divides 
the chord into equal parts meaning in half so you will know that the radius bisect a, a chord with its uh, angle in the uh, intersect point of intersection so the angle must be exactly 90 degrees meaning the chord and the radius must be perpendicular to each other so with this you will know that the radius bisect the chord that it intersects so our basis for this is there's a theorem for that in a circle if a radius is perpendicular to a chord then it bisects the chord and its arc but actually this is a, a an if and only if theorem so it's true as well that if it bisects the if the radius bisects the chord that means they are perpendicular so yeah it's, uh, it's applicable for if and only if as well for this theorem so let's have another circle so circle a and we're gonna put uh, two chords so another way to know that these two chords are congruent is if these two chords are equidistant to the center meaning they're having the same distance from the center so if they are congruent in distance from the center that means these two chords are congruent it's also true with chords which are in separate circle which are congruent circles so now the two chords are in separate congruent circles circle a and circle b so as long as they are in congruent uh, distance from their center two different centers then these two chords are also congruent so our basis is this theorem saying in a circle or congruent circles two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center again it's saying that it's if and only if that means the vice versa is true that if two chords are congruent that means they are equidistant from the center so let's have a circle circle a and uh, let's put an uh, angle so this is an inscribed angle it's not coming from the center but it's on the circle now let's have a arc an intercepted arc and let's say we know the measure of this arc it's uh, pi thirds or in degrees it's 60 degrees but usually we put um, the measure of the arc in radian form which is pi thirds but for, for convenience we're going to put the degrees uh, value of the radian pi thirds okay so the question is is it possible for us to know the angle of the the measure of the inscribed angle given the measure of the of the intercepted arc so it's actually possible the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc so since the intercepted arc measures pi thirds or 60 degrees so half of that is 30 degrees so what's our basis with this because of this theorem the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc so let's have another circle so circle a with an inscribed angle like this and then we're going to create um, an intercepted arc so let's say the measure of this inscribed angle is 20 degrees and then let's create another inscribed angle and the question is what is the measure of this uh, second inscribed angle considering that they share common intercepted arc so actually their uh, measures 
uh, these two inscribed angles are the same it's the same 20 degrees so as long as the inscribed angles are having the same intercepted arc they are congruent so our basis is this theorem inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent So now we have repositioned the vertex of the second inscribed angle but as you can see it's still the same measure wherever you are going to transfer this vertex as long as it's intercepting the same arc it's going to be the same measure so even here Or here so let's have another circle and we're gonna create a semicircle arc now let's uh, put an inscribed angle intercepting this semicircle now the question is what is the measure of the angle of the inscribed angle intercepting the semicircle so we know that the semicircle has a measure of a pi because the whole circle is 2 pi. So that's the measure of a, a semicircle. Or in degrees, it's 180 degrees. So using the previous theorem, we will know the measure of the inscribed angle. So we know that half of the measure of the intercepted arc is the measure of the inscribed angle so half of 180 degrees is 90 degrees so that means this is 90 degrees and it's all supported with a theorem an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle no matter where you position the vertex as long as it's intercepting a semicircle Even the vertex is here, or even here at the very side. So let's draw another circle and let's put a quadrilateral inside. And let us put um, two angles at the bottom as a given. Now the question is, is it possible for us to supply the remaining two angles on top? It's not possible for us to do that if the quadrilateral is not inscribed, not in the circle. But since it's inside the circle, it's inscribed on the circle, that means it's possible for us to supply that. So the sum of the opposite angles are always 180 so that means we can compute by subtracting uh, the pair that is given with 180 so just like this 180 degrees minus 80 so the opposite angle of 80 degrees will be measuring 100 degrees now let us solve for the opposite of 110 degrees so the measure of uh, the angle opposite to 110 degrees is 180 degrees minus 110 degrees is 70 degrees so our basis for this is the theorem saying if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle then its opposite angles are supplementary what does it mean by supplementary the sum of the two angles is 180 degrees thanks for watching and i hope you have learned from this video please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button and write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section